Hey guys, today I'm doing another subscriber designs video and today we start as per usual with something uh, littler than the main thing, although this is a pretty awesome little starting thing. This is from um, Ara, if I'm pronouncing that wrong, that's because I don't know how to pronounce things. And this is a stock X-Wing fighter, which I thought was really cool. It doesn't really have any weapons, so it's just an X-Wing whatever. But basically, um, <laughs> Yeah, it's obviously modelled off the X-Wing from Star Wars, and it can fly in atmosphere and in space. I haven't actually tried it in space yet. I did, um, I was also sent this with a rocket, so it can get to space legitimately, but I'm lazy, so I'm going to use Hyperator. But first I'm going to fly it around and see what it's like in atmosphere. So it takes off, and then we can just fly it around. It flies pretty nicely, because it has, it's a, well, it's a freaking biplane, technically. Um, and obviously this just uses these little Juno jets and control surfaces, but when you get into space, it's got these little Rockamax engines and a bunch of Verna thrusters, which should provide quite a lot of thrust and might make it quite maneuverable. But yeah, in atmosphere, pretty damn good. So, this, I mean, it's obviously not an SSTO, but you could put it into space and then drop into atmosphere if it doesn't burn up, which I kind of suspect it might, and then go and shoot a bunch of stuff if you had weapons on it, which it doesn't, and then, um... And then, I guess, just sort of stay on the planet, because it's not an SSD, until you get another rocket down there. So there's a lot of ifs and rockets that you need to make this a uh, um, space-to-surface fighter, but it's still pretty cool. Um, I do very much like this. But anyway, let's stop, let's stop flying around. Oh, first I'm going to try and fly out through the bridge. Oh no, first I'm going to crash it. Turn on this. Oh my god, I'm amazing. Uh, yeah, the, that actually helps the Verna thrusters, even in atmosphere. I'm going to try and fly it through what is left of the bridge. I destroy this place frequently in subscriber designs, because y'all send me war stuff so much, which I do very much enjoy, just to be clear. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to fly this through the bridge, and then we're going to send it to space, see if I can fly it around a bit. I don't think I have a reference point up there, unless I left the carrier up there from a video I made and then didn't end up putting out because it was terrible. Um, but yeah, if we do, even better, then I can just fly this into a carrier from an old series, which some of you may even remember, but it might not be up there, so don't get your hopes up. But yep, it's through the bridge, and slams right into the building. Still though, through the bridge. Oh, it, oh my god. Yeah. It's pretty impactful when it crashes. Anyway, let's put this in space, and fly it around a bit. Um, it'll be grand! Okay, so hyper-edit, of course, because I am lazy. So let's put this into a hundred kilometer orbit. Yeah. Oh, it is up here. That's good. Um. Yeah. Yeah, that's an issue. It's kind of in there. Okay, let's put it in a slightly lower orbit. Yes, this carrier, which you saw, was from an old series I made called, um... Kerbal Wars, I want to say? Uh, we'll look at it in a second. So I'll drop this down by a couple of meters. So 100,000. This needs to be this many nines? Oh, my maths escapes me today. That'd be 9,000. No, it needs to be this many nines. Um, uh, we'll, yeah, we'll drop it down by three meters. And there we go. Um, yeah, that carrier actually from a series I did a long time ago called um, Kerbal Wars. It is a stock carrier in which you can put fighters. Not this one because it's too big. But it will serve as a nice reference frame. Um, I imagine there's a bunch of dispensed missiles around here from me. I was going to do a thing. It really didn't work out awesomely. So yeah. Um, but that's up here. That's nice to have. Um, that was a fun series. And this can of course... Ooh, turn quite... No! Uh, turn SAS on it. Uh, <laughs> pull the gear up. And let's let's see if we can fly around a bit, see what it does, see if I can maybe just plow it through the carrier. Um, uh, I should set a target. Um, there we go. Now we have a little bit of a little bit of information. Oh yeah, it's quite hard to fly in space. You see, you got to kind of um, translate when you rotate um, because oh shit, because obviously there's no lift pushing you up, and this works. Pretty well. I mean, I'm not doing great, and if I had a joystick with a bunch of really nicely mapped things, it might help. Probably shouldn't be constantly firing up the engines either. Um, yeah, but hey, it does fly around in space. I might even be able to hit the carrier if I try it really hard um, and translate well and pull around. And no. <laughs> okay. Well, let's. Um, well. 
Oh, I'm running out of oxidizer quite seriously. So we're going to revert flight, revert flight to launch, and then fly this into the carrier and see what happens. We'll back up a bit. But hey, it actually flies around surprisingly well. You know, the Werner thrusters work very effectively. Um, so we'll put this into uh, the same orbit again, where we change this to... Okay, just so I get the numbers right, we'll do it like this. Um, so I need four more nines. <laughs> I'm tired. Don't judge me on my maths. Um, it's not even really math, it's just knowing how many numbers go into it. It's hard to type stuff, shut up. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we'll back up a bit using the Werner thrusters, if there are reverse thrusters, which I'm not sure there are. There may be just maneuvering thrusters, but uh, who knows, I guess we'll find out. Um, I want to target this, there we go. I think they've improved targeting in 1.2. It seems like much easier, you don't have to find a specific little point. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna have to back up manually. Luckily, this maneuvers quite well. <laughs> okay, uh, not the jet engines. The jet engines won't do a lot in space. Um, I've learned over the years. Uh, all right, okay. Then we'll flip around and get ready to slow down, and then we'll just plow right through it and see what happens. So, uh, yeah. Um, the carry is pretty cool. Oh, yeah. The plane I was looking at, which I thought was a space flight, it wasn't. Um, yeah, it's got a pretty decent hangar in here. Uh, it's pretty cool. On this side, it's just a big metal beam, which is uh, which is which makes it pretty pretty missile proof. Although not enough, apparently, if you watch that series, um, which it wasn't great. So you know, uh, <laughs> don't feel obligated to. And then we're gonna fly right into the thing. It's gonna be great. And uh, oh, just kind of dinged it. Is there unbreakable joints on? Kind of feel like they might be. Nope, just dinged it. I don't think anything broke. Okay. Um, yeah, just kind of dinged it. Oh well, that was depressing. <laughs> Let's hit it again. It's not getting away. That plane, by the way, if you are the person who designed it, will probably be in a thing. I just thought it kind of looked space fighter. It didn't work super well as a space fighter. Um, but I might use it for what you actually told me it was for in an email. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. So we'll just line up again. I'm going to hit it right in the back. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Gonna be gonna be a gonna be a bit of a Suestra maneuver. There we go, <laughs> nice and savaged. Um, not quite as cool as I thought it would be, but hey, there you go. We hit the carrier and explored a bit. All right, on to the next thing, which will be a post commentary thing because it's quite a long form thing. So let's let's move on to that now. So the next part of the video is a spacecraft from. Melon of the Higher Cosmos, and I'm not sure exactly what this is. It's a really cool looking rocket, and it's pretty big. However, it's, it's called Elu something, so I was like, okay, it goes to Elu. But then it's also called Deep Space something, so maybe it's just going to Deep Space. And in the email, it didn't really mention much about um, Elu, so <laughs> foolishly, I was like, yeah, I'm going to go to Elu. But I think this may have been some kind of moon vehicle, or I'm not sure. So I'm sorry to Melon of the Higher Cosmos, who sent me many a rocket. And there are some other ones I might get try and get to work, um, but they didn't have some of the parts, so I think I did the mods wrong. But yeah, this is a pretty cool spacecraft using some various mods, which I'm not entirely sure what it does, uh, well, what it's supposed to do. Um, but my thought was, oh, well, it's called Elu something, so of course it goes to Elu, so let's see if it can go to Elu. Um, spoiler alert, it can. Um, so I do a bit of planning, and I get my encounter with Elu, and then we've just got to go and do the burn. Um, I'm trying to get, because the email doesn't include all of the different uh, craft names, but yeah, I think it was maybe just supposed to be an orbiter of some kind. It's pretty cool, but hey man, you're clearly underestimating yourself. This can go to Elu. It can't land, as you'll see, but hey, so we're going to use the second stage of this rocket. Um, the first stage was quite cool. It was just three boosters all strapped together. I like it. And then some cool... Um, solid rocket boosters from, uh, I think the CSM rocket pa uh, booster pack or something like that. Anyway, so now we're using this, whatever this is, to just perform the rest of our burn, which will take a little while. Um, but yeah, this is just me assuming things like, oh, well, it says ELU on it, so obviously it's going to ELU. But yeah, it could probably easily be a really nice moon vehicle. Um, just go and do some orbiting stuff. I think that the parts there are pork jet parts or something like that. Um, the the cool module, which, uh, yeah, I think that's made by Porkjet. Anyway, so now we just need to do a bit of a tweak so that we can actually get into a nice uh, trajectory to Elu. Um, <laughs> yeah, I realized this about 
halfway through the, the trip to Elo, I was like, yeah, this isn't meant for that. No, it's not. Okay, that, this was foolish of me. Um, but yeah, anyway. So we will be able to fly past Elu, but probably not get into orbit or land. Now, obviously, the trip takes a long time, so let's cut that out to uh, about three years later when we get to the maneuver and they're sitting in their spacecraft like, aren't we supposed to go to the moon or Minmus or something? Um, can go anywhere in the Kerbin SOI and back is what the email says, I think. I think that's what it is. Um, the third is a four Kerbal. Yeah, this is a two Kerbal. CSM, that can go anywhere in the Kerbal SOI and back. Well, sir, you underestimate yourself. It can indeed go to Minmus. I'm sorry I didn't use this for the right thing. I just thought I'd put it in the video anyway because it kind of made me laugh when I was like about to get to Elo and was like, this isn't what, no, this, no. Um, but still, and so yeah, you can see we've almost, I used RCS to do that burn because I was pretty low on Delta V at this point and, uh, yeah, so there's a lot of RCS on it. That's pretty cool. That allowed me to do a 300 meters per second burn almost entirely just with that. And then, yeah, we'll fly past and fail to get into orbit because this is a moon spacecraft. <laughs> uh, but hey, you know, you should don't sell yourself short. Look, your spacecraft got all the way to Elu, flew right by it. Now it's going to be stuck in space forever. I try and use the retrograde rockets. Really nice touch, by the way. And some retrograde rockets for landing. That was the time when I was like, hmm, this, this won't get back. Why does it have retrograde landing rockets and a heat shield? And I was like, yeah, mm, I fucked up. Anyway, so that's stuck there. Thanks for that melon of a, a melon of a higher cosmos. But it's time to move on to the next vehicle. This is the Starlight 2.0 RLV by a guy called Derek, who sent it to me. Um, I think it's uh, basically an upgrade of my Starlight vehicle in Road to Exploration. And apparently the first stage can return to the launch pad because it's a rather rather big reusable rocket. Um, there, I've basically shut off two of the tanks at the bottom so I can use them for boosting back and hopefully landing at the launch pad. It's pretty cool. It has an interesting upper stage with which uses an LVT-45 engine. So it's not a 2.5 meter engine, so he's built himself a um, actual interstage shroud using a fairing, which I really like. And this is taking a reasonably large payload all the way to orbit. Now, it would be good to have something like this in Road to Exploration because when it lands, um, if it's the closer the VA, closer the KSC it is, the more money I get. So that's quite cool. And you can see it's very tall, very Falcon 9 like. So, yeah, anyway, let's move into four times time accelerate right, um, and put ourselves in a nice kind of trajectory. What I'm going to do is just dump the second stage going with its throttle on, because yeah, I'm sure it could get into orbit, but you know, time constraints, and I'd rather just see if I can land um, the booster. Anyway, this wasn't the best trajectory. I sent that off just going, but it didn't even get out of the atmosphere, and it's very lateral, so it's gonna be much harder to get back to the launch pad. So I fire up the engine um, with my reserve fuel, and I do get it kind of back near the launch pad, um, and I've got a little bit of fuel left. Obviously, though, that looks near the launch pad, but Kerbin is rotating under me, so I'm actually gonna land near the mountains which isn't super great. But anyway, let's see if we can get this back. It's got a nice uh, bunch of RCS thrusters up there. I prefer using RCS thrusters for this kind of thing than Werner thrusters because uh, then I'm not using landing fuel to maneuver. It's a nice little touch. Um, yeah, it's got some air brakes facing the right way, although they don't look rockety enough. You may have been the guy who commented saying they should be this way. Yes, technically, but that's, you know, not rockety enough. Anyway, we'll slow down to watch me try and land. However, I run out of fuel very quickly and explode into the ground near the mountain. So yeah, that didn't go great for me. But hey, let's try this over and over again, shall we? So let's launch again. I'm not going to launch every time, don't worry. But uh, yeah, I thought I'd start again because I want a very different trajectory. I'm going to take this on a much higher trajectory so that I can actually get the second stage into orbit and then land this. And that also means I don't have to cancel as much velocity to land at the launch pad. Now, landing at the launch pad isn't that easy. Not because the landing is difficult, which it is, but because judging where the VA, where, judging where the launch pad's gonna be is quite a hard task because Kerbin's rotating and I'm falling. So yeah, anyway, I activate the uh, fuel tanks, I fire up the, re the engine so I'm going retrograde, and then I flick around. There's always a tiny bit of lag as the orbits cross over. I guess that's just, uh, kind of patched conics issue. Anyway, so I put this actually on the launch pad um, and then I'm like, oh yeah, obviously that was foolish, but it does look like it'll get slightly closer. This was more about having enough fuel and actually having the spacecraft on the trajectory. And I did check the second stage would easily be able to get into orbit um, while this is heading to the ground. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, so then we're just going to go and land this, but we still run out of fuel. Um, oh no, we all we 
yeah, we, we do run out of fuel, but we have much more fuel than last time. And it lands, uh, not gently, but gen gentler. So yeah, this rocket would definitely work in Road to Exploration, although I don't know how much I'll be able to direct the first stage while the other rocket is going, uh, while the second stage is going. Anyway, this is a second, another attempt where I get much closer to the KSC. Um, and I have more fuel because I've obviously burned less to go it this far, but I set fire up my engines too late. Um, so yeah, that was a little sucky, and it flips around, and I'm like, I can do this, I'm basically God. Um, but I don't quite land it, because uh, I do, oh, all without look nice, and then it fell over. But hey, a little closer to the um, KSC, which is nice. And then here I am just trying to kind of burn myself into a better trajectory. I realized that I pretty much just want to be going straight down based on my altitude and the rate of, um, rate of rotation of the planet. But yeah, you can see the second stage on a good trajectory there, would easily get into orbit. Um, which is nice. Good, good job. Good job, Derek. Anyway, let's see if I can do it a good job of landing this, um, which will require much rotation and then um, a long descent, but we'll cut through the descent because it's just falling and you know what that looks like. Uh, so here I am just coming down pretty close, actually. Um, you can't see it right now, but it's just in uh, hills behind the KSC, still not close enough and on a bit of a hillside. So this also kind of fails because I slow down too quickly because I always kind of bitch out just before the ground. Um, but yeah, you can see I'm pretty far from the mountains, but I think it's pretty much where I landed last time. But yeah, um, I start to tumble, of course, as I tend to do, because I slow down too quickly and kind of fall down on a hill. Would be much easier on flatter land, hence me trying to get closer to the um, closer to the KFC. This time I'll get very close, 10 kilometers away, but in the ocean, um, which uh, is often, it means if you land too hard, everything is destroyed, because the ocean, while better than it used to be, is still deadly, deadly water. Always deadly with the KSP in the water. But yeah, I'm coming down pretty well, pretty gently, except I do run out of fuel and start to tip um, various ways. Oh, I don't run out of fuel, I just tip too much and the whole rocket is destroyed. This time I come down very close, just behind the KSC, you can see I was very close there, and the problem with this one is I run out of fuel because I was redirecting myself. I did try flying the rocket a bit like the Falcons do, but it didn't work super great. Um, anyway, I run out of fuel and kind of break off the landing legs. Yeah, you can actually fly a rocket by turning it and using the lifting body effect. Anyway, for my final attempt, I come down right in line with the um, KSC, just, just slightly too far to the south, and I'm gonna land in the water. It made me very sad. I did try again flying the rocket by tilting it against the airstream, but it did, uh, it did no good for me, but hey, it does prove that with a bit of practice and a slightly better um, inclination, I could have gotten back to almost right near the launch pad. However, I don't land this safely because I can't, I find it very hard to land propulsively on water, although I have done it before, um, occasionally. So maybe I'll add this to the um, Road to Exploration fleet, uh, maybe not, I'm not sure, depends whether I want propulsive landings. I may try it one time, or build something like this, I'd do it very slightly differently, but I do like all of the things he's put in. The second stage is also reusable, but you know, the interesting part was the first stage. But anyway, thank you to Derek, Melon of the Cosmos, and of course Ara for the, uh, or Ara for the um, beautiful X-Wing at the start. But this is the end of the video, and if you'd like to go check out something crazy that I designed, there's a video I did actually a while ago, because I'm recording this way in advance. Um, but it's anyway, it's of a flying bunker, and it's cool because it's a bunker, and it flies, and it shoots another flying bunker. There is also my latest episode of Road to Exploration, in which, depending on the, we maybe land on Duna, I'm not sure of the chron chronology of my videos right now. I'm recording a lot in advance for Christmas. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been Caspi with Tape. I'll see you next time.